Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about protein quantitation by Bradford S.A. The measurement of protein concentration in an aqueous sample is an important assay in proteomics lab for comparative study of differential protein expression and better sample resolution. The protein assay is also very crucial in biochemistry research and development labs for applications ranging from enzymatic studies to provide data for biopharmaceutical lot release. Hence, a rapid and accurate method for the estimation of protein concentration is essential in many fields of protein study. As I mentioned in my previous video, UV and visible spectroscopy is used to rapidly determine the concentration of protein. There are many methods available such as protein concentration measurement using UV protein spectroscopy, traditional dye-based absorbance measurement methods such as BCA, Lowry and Bradford assays, and the fluorescent dye-based assays, amine derivatization and detergent partition assays. This wide variety of colorimetric methods for protein concentration measurements all work in a similar way. Usually, the reagents contain a dye which binds specifically to the proteins in a solution. The absorbance of a known set of standards is measured and the standard co-produced. Absorbance measurements of unknown samples can then be compared to the code to establish their concentration. We see that no single assay dominates the market. The reason is due to specific limitations of certain methods that investigators need to consider before selecting the most appropriate assay for that sample. Many of the dye-based assays have unique chemical mechanisms that are prone to interference from chemicals prevalent in many biological buffer preparations. We will discuss about interference later in this video. Our focus in this video is on Bradford assay which was originally described by Marion Bradford in 1976. As you see here the snapshot of his manuscript. Since then, it has become the preferred method for quantifying protein in many laboratories. The paper claims that this technique is simpler, faster and more sensitive than the Lowry method and is subject to less interference by common reagents and non-protein components of biological samples. I recommend you to go through this publication. It's readily available online. The Bradford assay relies on the binding of the dye Kumasi Brilliant Blue. There are different types of Kumasi Blue dyes and which type of Kumasi Blue dye the Bradford assay uses, we will see it in a bit. Here is the structure of Kumasi Blue R250 and Kumasi Blue G250. R refers to reddish tint in blue color dye and G refers to greenish tint in blue color dye. If you noticed, Basically, there are two chemical forms of a disulfonated triphenylmethane compound and are structurally very similar aside from the fact there are two additional methyl groups in G250. According to the publication, the Bradford assay is based on the observation that Kumasi Brilliant Blue G250 exists in two different color forms, red and blue. The red form is converted to the blue form upon binding of the dye to protein. The protein dye complex has a high extinction coefficient thus leading to great sensitivity in measurement of the protein. If not bound to protein, the literature suggests the free dye can exist in four different ionic forms for which the pK values are 1.15, 1.82 and 12.4. The more cationic forms of the dye predominate in the acidic assay reagent solution and have absorbance maxima at 470 and 650 nanometer respectively. In contrast, more anionic blue form of the dye which binds to protein has an absorbance maximum at 590 nanometer. Thus, quantity of protein can be estimated by determining the amount of dye in the blue ionic form. This is usually achieved by measuring the absorbance of the solution at 595 nanometer. The dye interacts electrostatically but non-covalently with the amino and carboxyl groups of proteins. The dye molecules bind to proteins to form a protein dye complex. 
The formation of the complex stabilizes the negatively charged anionic form of the dye producing the blue color even under acid conditions when most of the molecules in solution are in cationic form. This is the basis of the Bradford assay. The binding of the dye to a protein causes a shift in the absorbance maximum of the dye from 465 to 595 nanometer. The increase of absorbance at 595 nanometer is monitored to determine protein concentration. The binding of the dye to protein is a very rapid process. Approximately it takes 2 minutes and the protein dye complex remains dispersed in solution for a relatively long time, approximately 1 hour, thus making the procedure very rapid and yet not requiring critical timing for the assay. The graph here shows the rate of formation of protein dye complex in the assay system and the stability of the color complex. The absorbance was monitored at 7.5 second intervals for 2 minutes and then at 1 minute intervals for a period of 1 hour. As seen from the graph, the color development is essentially complete at 2 minutes and remains stable plus or minus 4% for a period of 1 hour. Since the protein dye complex has a tendency to aggregate with time, there is a decrease in color after this period of time simply by the physical removal of the protein dye complex from solution. If very precise determinations are required, investigators should take precaution to read the absorbance of sample during one of the flatter portions of the color stability curve between 5 and 20 minutes after reagent addition. This still gives ample time to read a relatively large number of samples. In this graph, you can see the protein dye binding response pattern for various proteins such as albumin, hemoglobin, chymotrypsinogen and cytochrome C. The dye appears to bind most readily to arginyl and lysyl residues of proteins but does not bind to the free amino acids. This specificity can lead to variation in the response of the assay to different proteins which is the main drawback of the method. Here in the graph, you can see the results of various proteins assayed in the system as to individual differences. There is a scattering of points around the line drawn in the graph. The scattering is believed to be a multifaceted function composed of difficulties in determining the exact amount of protein used in measuring extension coefficients and some degree of variation in the efficiency of dye binding to various proteins. So now the basic is clear. Let's see how to actually perform the Bradford assay. The assay reagent is made by dissolving 100 mg of Kumasi Blue G250 in 50 ml of 95% ethanol. The solution is then mixed with 100 ml of 85% phosphoric acid and made up to 1 liter with distilled water. Filter the reagent with Wattman number no. 1 filter paper and then store in an amber bottle at room temperature. It is stable for several weeks. However, during this time, dye may precipitate from solution, so the stored reagent should be filtered before use. Or you can simply just buy the ready-made bread for reagent from any commercial source. The protein standard bovine gamma globulin is used at a concentration of 1 mg per ml or 100 microgram per ml for the microassay in distilled water as a stock solution. This should be stored frozen at minus 20 degrees Celsius. The ready-made kit provides BSA bovine serum albumin 2 mg per ml ampules as a standard. Plastic and glassware used in the assay should be absolutely clean and detergent free. Quartz spectrophotometer cuvette should not be used because dye binds to this material. Traces of dye bound to glassware or plastic can be removed by rinsing with methanol or detergent solution. Three types of assays, the standard assay which is suitable for measuring between 10 and 100 microgram protein and the microassay for detecting between 1 and 10 microgram of protein. The microassay may also be adopted as a 96 well plate assay. You can find this information in a package insert when you purchase a kit or it's available online as well. 
Standard assay method involves pipetting between 10 and 100 microgram of protein in 100 microliter total volume into a test tube. If the approximate sample concentration is unknown, you can assay a range of dilutions like 10 times, 100 times or 1000 times and prepare triplicates of each sample. For the calibration curve, pipette triplicate volumes of 10, 20, 40, 60, 80 and 100 microliter of 1 mg per ml gamma globulin or BSA standard solution into test tubes and make each up to 100 microliter with distilled water. Pipette 100 microliter of distilled water into an additional tube to provide the reagent blank. The table here shows the final amount of protein present in the tube with different volumes of standards. After that, add 5 ml of protein reagent to each tube and mix well by inversion or gentle vortexing. Avoid foaming which will lead to poor reproducibility. Measure the absorbance at 595 nm of the samples and standards against the reagent plank between 2 minutes and 1 hour after mixing. The 100 microgram standard should give absorbance value of about 0.4. The standard curve is not linear and the precise absorbance varies depending on the age of the assay reagent. Consequently, it is essential to construct a calibration curve for each set of assays. Similarly for microassay method, pipette triplicate or duplicate samples depending on availability of the sample containing between 1 and 10 microgram in a total volume of 100 microliter into 1.5 ml microfuge tubes. If the approximate sample concentration is unknown, again you can assay a range of dilutions 10, 100 or 1000 times. For the calibration curve, pipette duplicate or triplicate volumes of 10, 40, 60, 80 and 100 microliter of 100 microgram per ml gamma globulin standard solution into microfuge tubes and adjust the volume to 100 microliter with water. If you are doing protein estimation frequently, you can prepare standards and store at 4 degrees Celsius instead of minus 20 so you avoid freeze and thaw cycles. What I do in the lab usually is I prepare different dilutions uh, of the different concentration and store at 4 degrees Celsius. So whenever I do the assay, I take the equal volume of the uh, different concentration of standards. For the reagent plank, pipette 100 microliter of distilled water into a tube. Add 1 ml of protein reagent to each tube and mix gently but thoroughly. Measure the absorbance of each sample between 2 and 60 minutes after addition of the protein reagent. The absorbance value of a sample containing 10 microgram gamma globulin is 0.45. For routine measurement of the protein content of many samples, the microassay can be adapted for use with a microplate reader. The total volume of the modified assay is limited to 210 microliter by reducing the volume of each component. Ensure effective mixing of the assay components by pipetting up to 10 microliter of the protein sample into each well before adding 200 microliter of the dye reagent. You can see here the triplicates of different concentration of BSA standard and unknown samples. You see here the BSA standard curve. If you plot all points, the curve is hyperbolic. Since the linear trend line is used, it included only few points and the sample concentration is measured within that standard curve range. Now let's talk about interference in the assay. The Bradford assay is relatively free from interference by most commonly used biochemical reagents. However, a few chemicals as shown in the table may significantly alter the absorbance of the reagent blank or modify the response of proteins to the dye. The materials that are most likely to cause problems in biological extracts are detergents and ampholytes. This should be removed from the sample solution by using gel filtration or dialysis. Alternatively, they should be included in the reagent blank and calibration standards at the same concentration as that found in the sample. Strongly alkaline buffering agents can interfere with the reading. The presence of base in the assay increases the absorbance by shifting the equilibrium of the free dye towards the anionic form. This may present problems when measuring protein content in concentrated basic buffers. 
This may be overcome by running the appropriate buffer controls and subtracting the value for the control either mathematically or spectrophotometrically. Guanidine hydrochloride and sodium ascorbate compete with dye for protein leading to underestimation of the protein content. In the Bradford publication, a wide spectrum of components was tested for effects on the protein dye binding assay, as you see here in the table. A lack of effect on the assay by magnesium chloride, potassium chloride, sodium chloride, ethanol and ammonium sulfate was observed. I hope you understood the basics of Bradford protein assay. If you have any question, feel free to comment and check out my website proteomicsmadeeasy.com for more videos. Thank you for watching.